Hello dear friends and welcome to my watercolor painting session where today I decided to paint a very colorful and super cute <laughs> uh, parrot and uh, I also chose to use a pretty big um, piece of paper it's a very big sheet by Arsh uh, this is so far my favorite brand of watercolor paper and I really love using it when I'm working on large pieces, uh, especially if it's a cold press, because sometimes it's hard to find <laughs> arch paper in Ukraine, where I am located now. And uh, luckily in summer, I managed to secure a couple of blocks of arch paper. So now I'm really enjoying myself <laughs> with arch. So the sketch was already prepared and here I'm demonstrating my first layers, so-called underpainting uh, for the bird, which is my first uh, watercolor layer, very light, very transparent, uh, something that goes under <laughs> all the next layers. So it should be not too noticeable, but more like a light background for my bird today. And I decided to start from the head, went from the lightest color, yellow, and uh, up to light blue. I used cerulean, 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 different types of uh, <laughs> names you can see on the tube. Uh, and uh, slightly darker tone to the back of the head. And you know, watercolor gets much lighter, it loses its um, intensity in color after it dries. So um, I'm aware that <laughs> my already light layer that I'm placing right now is going to be even lighter after. Um, <laughs> sometimes um, it's a bit of a bummer because I need to go over like a couple of times to reach the desired uh, depth, desired intensity of my wash. But um, it's better to apply an extra layer rather than um, <laughs> have to start over because you can't really uh, fix watercolor mistakes. You can't really um, remove the darkness from your layer, especially if you're working on some delicate paintings. So here I am going through super colorful feathers of my bird and applying yellows, blues and greens uh, on the top part. And for me, um, this uh, black part on the face of the parrot is something like a separation line, something that allows me to stop my work uh, when I reach this uh, black part. Because eventually it's the darkest uh, area on my painting, so uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> um, if I stop there, because I will always be able to add darker tone on top uh, to cover my connecting line, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, in the area where the paint went too far on top of the head of the bird, I removed some of the pigment with the tissue and corrected it with a brush. It took me a while, so I, I skipped through it on the video to not bore you to death. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those uh, moments when you need to uh, correct the shape of your subject. In my case, it's the head of a parrot. With uh, mm, the brush, by lifting the pigment, uh, using the tissue as well to help yourself and uh, finding the best shape that, you know, is going to work <laughs> for the painting. So I'm just deepening the tone with a darker uh, paint, with a darker mix. And uh, for this part, I like to use um, blue with orange, which are complementary colors, and they give me this nice deep gray tone that looks really pretty, and it also matches with the overall um, uh, color palette for the birds because I have blue all over the bird and I will have yellows as well um, yellows and oranges so those two colors are perfect to be in the mix as well A 
painting the feathers with um, sort of marking technique is pretty easy. I just load my brush with the paint and press it belly down uh, on paper, uh, making a little um, stroke, like extended press. And it gives me this um, petal looking mark on paper that eventually serves me as a um, feather just with one move. I like uh, <laughs> easy approach <laughs> to this kind of stuff. Instead of um, worrying about the perfect shapes, I just um, press the brush against the paper and uh, work with the mark that I receive in the end. Oh, of course, add some details later, but for now, as my first layer, that's gonna do the job. So now I'm moving to the area under the black separation line, <laughs> which is under the eye. And oh, again, I'm starting with the lighter tone, yellow, and move it down to uh, green and add some orange tones and just let the color mix uh, and bleed into each other the way it wants without really controlling it much and just enjoying the colorful Right under the eye, I would need to gain a darker tone and um, also work on the density of my layer. So I'm adding a bit more of, a, uh, again, darker mix <laughs> to deepen in the tone under the eye and prepare this area for the darkest paint that will, I will eventually apply later on. So I'm slowly building up um, tone by tone, the uh, overall uh, feel <laughs> of my first <laughs> layer. <laughs> Building up depth uh, of my colors, of my layers, is a very meditative work. So it takes some time uh, to add tone on top of the other tone, <laughs> achieving um, darker uh, color and again it's uh, I'm still working on the wet layer which means it's not a glazing technique I'm not adding a new uh, layer on top of the dry one I'm still working on my first layer so eventually I will be able to achieve even deeper tone later on if I need to uh, we'll see how things go <laughs>
This is exactly why I'm spending quite some time uh, working on the depth of my colors, of my tones, above the eye and below the eye to make it look more realistic. Uh, also, of course, checking myself <laughs> with the reference photo and trying to stick to uh, portraying the, the volumes uh, correctly. As my paper sheet gets uh, a bit drier, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to um, start adding next layers and separating the feathers or adding some texture to the feathers. That's why I went over the uh, feathers on the top of the head with some darker blues and grays that I already mixed before. Uh, but because it's a second layer over the first dried one, I get a nice uh, deep tone and the colors don't bleed into each other. So there's more control and more specific um, stroke and detail that you see on the paper. And I do the same for the feathers on the side, separating them, uh, showing the shadow in between. And if I need to, I can dilute the sharp strokes with a wet brush and correct the tones and direction of my stroke as well. I'll be adding water uh, over my already painted wash a uh, few times in this painting and uh, I know this can be scary <laughs> for all artists, the beginners and advanced uh, painters because uh, sometimes the water on your brush will remove layer that's already there on paper and it really depends on so many things actually <laughs> on um, on the paper first of all uh, how paper works uh, with uh, pigments and how it keeps pigment inside its layers every paper brand has its own so to speak recipe of <laughs> making uh, paper and how it uh, works with paints and water is uh, kind of different from brand to brand and as well um, the actually the actual qualities of uh, pigments some of them are stainy some of them are not opaque or transparent all this affects how they behave when they're in the mix or single you know single color um, when they're wet and when they're dry so all this takes time to learn about the paints and paper that you particularly use and all that can affect <laughs> the technique the stroke that i just did with a um, wet um, brush over already painted uh, part of my bird so yeah i feel like the bottom of my bird is already dry i mean the paper got dry uh, and i need to be able to create soft transitions so i used uh, my flat brush to uh, add water on my paper to prepare it for the next uh, layers and to ensure that my Layers are going to mix smoothly without sharp connections and strokes. So yeah, it's, um, it's a puzzle. <laughs> uh, to portray the feather-like texture and not get stuck painting hyper-realistic uh, feathers, I again use this approach 
of um, pressing the brush belly down and just leaving marks in the shape of um, I don't know a water drop or a petal um, and that's uh, something that's gonna build up um, my feathers one by one but just by pressing the brush and later on I'll be able to uh, add more detail to all this story <laughs> to make it look more like feather. Irish paper has this very specific uh, feature. Um, it uh, cuts the color, no, the intensity of the color really a lot more than other brands that I've noticed. So usually I really need to apply like a very uh, intense color from the start and half of it will disappear and get lighter uh, after drying out. So now I see that my um, <laughs> yellow cheek, <laughs> yellow part of the bird's face it's kind of dull and not very colorful and I would like it to be really standing out yellow. Um, so I use this as an opportunity to, well, intensify yellow and connect yellow with blue in a better way. So it's uh, more smooth and I don't see this connecting lines in between uh, blue and yellow. And that's why I applied pretty watery but intense yellow and use it as a connection between the other colors and it also opened me mm, an opportunity to build up other colors one by one so it looks more like um, a mixed uh, wash mixed gradated wash <laughs> where i go down by uh, connecting one color with another which are different so you definitely can see um, the, the end of one color and beginning of another, but the connected line is still pretty soft. Mm. The bottom, at first I wanted to do it in a kind of um, desaturated tone, so it's not very um, bright, it doesn't distract um, and like drag attention to the belly of the parrot. But then the color turned out to be way too muddy. So I removed it and started working with rather orangey uh, subtones in it. So it's still dull, but orange. So you can, it, it's warm. You can see the temperature, you can feel it. You can see the uh, overall um, tone in the belly of the bird and uh, it's light. Uh, not saturated <laughs> and pretty um, calm so finally i got the, what i wanted <laughs> the, the belly of the bird is um pretty uh not noticeable can i say that oh maybe hope you understand me so my my idea behind it actually is um to make it look like the bird is stuck in its head <laughs> out to look at you, but the belly is, the body, the belly is um, behind it, so at the back. Um, and this will give me a feeling of perspective where the head is closer to you as a viewer and the body is a bit behind it. Uh, and to be able to achieve this perspective, the depth in my painting, I need to point out the head in more intense colors, intense details, um, more clear and specific. And the rest of the body should be uh, more diluted, uh, less saturated, less colorful. So visually it feels like uh, it's a bit further away. Uh, that's how I'm <laughs> creating this illusion of um, depth and perspective. Uh, maybe now it's not very noticeable and understandable, um, but uh, you know, I have this plan in my head <laughs> and maybe like uh, another 40 minutes of painting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's gonna come up together pretty well in the end, at least I hope so. <laughs> Now 
With the negative space technique, I <laughs> went very close to the beak um, of the parrot and outlined the bottom of it. It's not very clear right now because there is no outline on the other side. Uh, it will happen soon, but uh, for now I need to be careful with the beak because it's going to be much lighter than the green uh, shadows that I'm painting. Um, so carefully I just went <laughs> crawled <laughs> as close as possible to the beak and outlined the bottom of it. And also with the same color since it's already loaded uh, in my brush, I am defining the feathers once more. And I feel like I'm going to do it a lot <laughs> to create this um, feeling of um, dozens and dozens of feathers um, on the body of the bird. Uh, working with a relatively wet brush, uh, the layers that I lay down uh, become less um, concentrated and they also flow and mix uh, with each other, um, especially if I'm adding shadows right away to define and separate each uh, feather one from another. So. It's not very concentrated, not very defined, and exactly what I'm aiming for on the belly. But when I will be working on the head again, I will uh, pay more attention to details and uh, clarifying each feather more specifically than on the belly. For the same reasons that I explained just before, <laughs> to make head more um, like on the forefront and the body on the background. The bottom of the belly of the body is darker, um, so I decided to intensify the color and add another layer on top of it, uh, which will also nicely separate the yellow part of the belly uh, and make it shine even more, make it stand out even more. And the belly bottom, <laughs> the, the bottom of the body uh, will be darker, but again, it's harsh, so uh, after it will get dry, uh, this uh, uh, dark looking green will become lighter. Yeah, so I'm not worried about um, concentrated color that I'm putting right now. I know it's, it's not going to be that intense later.
uh, leaving the body to dry and also think what I'm going to do with it next. <laughs> um, I switched to painting the um, left uh, wing and finishing this part that I started under the beak, building up layer by layer. And this one um, is a bit more specific than the wing on the right. I will, yeah, I'll do something with that too. I'll, I'll clarify the details and shadows on the right wing too. For now, I'm building up um, feather by feather the left wing and right away adding pretty concentrated pigment um, so I don't have to come back to it. I don't need to think about details as well because again it's this it's the part of this perspective game <laughs> that I was talking about so no need for detailing but I would like to have more uh, like uh, defined shadows and uh, tones from the start so I don't have to come back 15 times and deepen the tone. <laughs> it's not very good for paper as well to add so many layers. Uh, even though arch paper can handle it no problem, I think it still at some point makes your layers not so airy and watercolory like it could be and uh, you know, translucency and transparency and this airy feel of watercolor is something that makes this medium special. Uh, that's why I would like to <laughs> not overdo um, my painting and not to make it look like it's a uh, acrylic or gouache in the end. So keep my layers, um, uh, I don't know, up to two or maximum three, not going way too, too high up in numbers. So it's not too thick and dense, and uh, yeah, keep it uh, keep it light, keep it airy, keep it uh, with the color in a traditional way. Now I need to connect the uh, bottom uh, bottom part with the right wing because now it looks a bit weird, like the right wing is cut out <laughs> and not really. Um, yeah, there's no harmony with the wing between the wing and the body. Uh, so I'm gonna add um, darker tone in the bottom and connect it with uh, the wing. Also use it as an opportunity to correct the shape of uh, the bird, so it's more proportionate. And because it's a darker tone, it's much easier to um, correct the shapes and integrate the stone uh, into the painting, um, because darker color is <laughs> eventually <laughs> covering the lighter one, so you have more uh, control in the situation. The only risky part is where you're connecting dark tone with light tone and my light tone already got dry. So I'm using this trick of adding watery mid tone. So it's um, a bit lighter green, but not as light as the previous uh, layer. And then with the semi wet brush, I am um, washing out the uh, sharp borders, the sharp outlines eventually connecting my darkest tone with my lightest tone using this uh, wet mint tone. <laughs>
think now it's time to move on and give it a rest and work on um, the branch where the bird is sitting on. And with the bold uh, moves, I am painting the uh, brown layer for the tree, for the branch. Um, I'm also mixing my Van Dyke, uh, which is brown, with blue to achieve um, darker tone and it's also calmer. Uh, it's not as um, striking bright brown, uh, which is perfect because this uh, branch is not really um, important. It's also part of the perspective where it should be at the back, um, not uh, standing out too much uh, to the viewer. So I don't need um, bright um, <laughs> ringing <laughs> colors. Um, I need them calm and rather dull maybe darker um, to just connect the bird to something so it's not like uh, hanging in the air <laughs> with nothing mm, so yeah the the here is the branch I will add up some details right away not details but shadows like darker shadows in between uh, to show the shadow under the bird's body and add the um, feet as well why not it's all gonna bleed into the tree because both um, both paints are wet, both layers are wet. So they're all gonna nicely connect with each other and later on I will uh, add the um, texture to the feet so they're more, well, so they look more like feet. <laughs> uh, but for now, I'm totally satisfied that uh, those layers are melting and bleeding into each other. Uh, because again, this is sort of an underpainting for for the branch with the feet. When you work with watercolor, you always need to think for the end game. Uh, you you put your layers down, and uh, <laughs> it looks like nothing. It looks weird, um, but you know that because you have a plan and it's in your head. <laughs> and people can't see it, <laughs> uh, they don't understand where you're going with it, but you know, uh, you have this idea of um, what's going to look like, and uh, this is what is driving you, <laughs> and um, yeah, sometimes it looks like artists do like a weird stuff, but it's all in the head, it's all the plan <laughs> of the end game <laughs> um, that will help you reach the desired goal because you paint layer by layer you build up your your piece um, tone by tone and you reach your goal in the end so here again i am applying this clean water over my um, already existing layers and it's uh, scary as hell because every time i'm like oh my god if it's gonna be too much water on the brush I'm going to dilute my, my bottom layer. I'm going to remove it or pick it up or just like make it blurry. <laughs> so yeah, always, yeah, every time it's, um, it's a bit of, um, of a shaky, shaky moment for me. Time to work on the beak. <laughs> Here I'm starting with very light, almost transparent underpainting. <laughs> Your favorite, probably. Um, so I'm applying a very diluted uh, layer of uh, cerulean and stretch it out almost everywhere on the beak where will be the lightest part of the beak. 
Um, some parts I will keep white, so the whiteness of the paper will play the role of white pigment for me. And um, very carefully I'm adding absolutely diluted super light layers uh, of uh, orange and a bit of blue. And it's almost like a surgical work to build up um, all these super light tones uh, on the beak and prepare it for further details later on. Essentially, I'm following the same structure. I add the lightest tone, then I add a bit darker tone. Uh, then I go with like a more... Um, no. <laughs> then I go with more intense orange and then I add a darker tone to connect the orange with the rest. Uh, the darker tone is the same that I used before, it's a mix of blue and orange. So again, we are here with the same color palette, uh, using pretty much the same colors. Even though, in general, the parrot has like a ton of different <laughs> different colors. But hey, that's, that's the bird. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I try to stick to the same oranges and blues that I used um, in the painting in general. I really take my sweet time working on the beak because, um, well, personally, it's my... <laughs> my type of pleasure to work on a uh, hyper detailed stuff and hyper realistic uh, paintings so in this case uh, the beak and the eye are going to be my my heaven <laughs> i will i will stay pretty long on the beak and on the eye to make it very realistic and um, like photo realistic if you want to say that to call it this way um, that's why I need to be very precise with tones and mid-tones and shadows and highlights uh, that I use for both beak and the eye. And it's also part of my plan to make the head uh, in the forefront. So by creating very realistic uh, details and parts <laughs> of the head. Um, I am making the head uh, stand out, so it looks like it's uh, closer to us, it's in the forefront. And uh, yeah, that's why so much time on the beak. I will also add feathers later.
Painting the eye is also a very special moment <laughs> for me, at least. Um, I love painting eyes and uh, I usually I start with the outline, so I will work on the very light, almost transparent shadows that are surrounding the eye. Um, and because it's very difficult to add them later when the eye is already painted, uh, way too much risk to dilute the eye, the layers that you already painted. And now when, they're, when they don't exist yet, <laughs> it's, um, it makes more sense to me to start with the outline and um, work the shadows first, very light, very diluted shadows, um, creating this um, very uh, dull outline first. It also gives me an opportunity to correct the shape of the eye itself if the circle wasn't uh, perfect. Uh, I, I can uh, change it right now. It's um, again, it's the negative space technique that allows me to create uh, an outline of something without painting this something. <laughs> so I'm creating the shape of the eye without actually painting the eye inside. Then I'll start with the highlight in the eye with a very light blue tone. I drop just a little bit and uh, even dilute it slightly to keep uh, the whiteness of the paper that is uh, very gently transitioning into the blue tone. And then I will start with the darkest part of the eye, eventually just black. And then there are just a few details left uh, to paint around the eye, to create this uh, texture around the eye uh, that is very particular for birds. <laughs> so there's that. 
And then I just need to evaluate my my painting as I'm on the final stage of it. And there are a few things that I would like to change. Uh, it's the again the intensity of the face of the yellow and orange part of the feathers. So I'm adding yet another layer to intensify the yellows. And it will also give me an opportunity to add some um, other tones in it but in a softer manner because when I will add them uh, they will not give me sharp edges they will dilute and um, bleed <laughs> into my uh, yellow color that I just painted Here's this uh, darker, darkest, actually, <laughs> the darkest um, area on the face of the bird, sort of like a mask <laughs> um, around the eye. And as well, it's much more efficient to add this dark, almost black uh, tone over still wet layer so that my strokes do not look cut out, they don't look too sharp. Then I'll take a moment to add the texture by adding light strokes on the head of the bird with the blue, uh, where the feathers are blue, and green, where the feathers are green, <laughs> with a very quick, almost uh, barely touching the paper strokes with a super tiny, thin uh, brush, and carefully building up the texture of the feathers on the face, which is my final part of this painting. And officially my <laughs> parrot is done. I hope you enjoyed watching my uh, painting process and I'll be happy to uh, see your paintings if you decided to join me and paint along or um, share your comments and thoughts here in this video. <laughs>